I was teaching a class of steam fitter apprentices about boilers. Boilers? No one uses them anymore, one yelled out. They're still used, and in my opinion, the best type of heat there is, I responded. Rolling his eyes, he said, It's old technology, not very efficient and not green at all. Perhaps you could tell the class why you think they're still a viable option for heating, the regular instructor suggested, and I smiled. Hi, welcome to Boiler Room Detective. I'm Ray Wolfarth, your host. This video talks about why boilers are still a great heating source. It was taken from an article I wrote for Plumbing and Mechanical Magazine. Hey, just a shout out for my book, Lessons Learned Servicing Boilers. It's my number one seller and it's available on Amazon. I'll have the link below. According to the ASHRAE HVAC Applications Handbook, the estimated life of an air to air heat pump or a rooftop unit is 15 years, while a boiler life expectancy is between 24 to 35 years, depending on the boiler type. So you will install two heat pumps or rooftop units for every boiler. Have you seen the price of refrigerants lately? R410A is spiking, and the new slightly flammable refrigerants are 40 to 100% higher than R410A. Hydronic system uses readily available, safe, and affordable water. How do you find refrigerant leaks? I asked the class. With a leak detector, one apprentice said smugly. Die, another chimed in. Refrigerant leak detection is time consuming. What if I told you that leak detection for a hydronic system can be done in minutes and cost almost nothing? I asked. And they scoffed. Pointing to the ceiling towel, I asked, if a pipe was leaking above a ceiling, how would you know? It would stain the ceiling towel, the one smug apprentice smiled. No expensive testing equipment needed. Just look at the ceiling towel, I said. What's the head pressure on an R410A unit? About 400 PSI, someone called out. Exactly. A hydronic system pressure is about 12 PSI for a two-story building. If the pipes burst on a refrigerant tube in this classroom, it could displace all the oxygen. Refrigerant inhalation causes cardiac arrhythmia and suffocation. A hydronic pipe leak would wet the ceiling towel and possibly the floor, I observed. What about cooling? A boiler can't cool a building, someone yelled. They were a tough group. You're right. A boiler provides incredible comfortable heating source, and although it doesn't provide cooling, it can be used for heating domestic water, snow melting, pool heating, towel warming, space heating, and most importantly, for making beer, I said. Let me ask you a question. When you purchased your home stove, did you ask the salesperson if the stove would keep your beer cold, I asked, and they smiled. A boiler uses fossil fuels. That affects the environment. A heat pump doesn't, a person yelled. Great point. Did you know that most electricity is generated using fossil fuels? According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, 43% of all electricity is generated with natural gas and 16% coal. Nuclear makes up 19%, and the rest, 21%, is generated by renewable sources such as wind, hydro, and solar, I said. Continuing, I said, let's pretend you wanted to replace your 20-year-old gas boiler with a new one. Not because it's not working, but you want something more efficient. You look at three options. The first is a non-condensing boiler rated at 82% efficient. The second is a 95% efficient condensing boiler and the last is an air-to-air -air heat pump. The boilers will be connected to your existing gas pipe. Your first thought is to use an air-to-air -air heat pump because it's better for the environment. We'll pretend you didn't know that fossil fuels generate the most electricity. You and your spouse don't even mind that the line sets will look like something out of Stranger Things on your outside wall, where the estimated life of the new system is only 15 years. Did you know that according to the Office of Fossil Energy and Carbon Management, that you didn't even know there was such a department, 
the average efficiency of a coal-fired power plant is about 33% efficient. After generating the electricity, we have to transport it to your home. The average energy loss through transmission is about 6%. So if you choose electricity to heat your home, the efficiency of the electricity is now at 27% efficient coming to your home. That same gas could be used in a boiler and you would be between 82 and 95% efficient. Which one's more greener? I asked. Another reason to consider boilers for space heating is comfort. When you walk into a commercial office space, try to count how many space heaters are being used. Each space heater uses the same energy as 40 fluorescent light bulbs. Hydronic heating provides comfort, which increases the productivity of the office. Another consideration is the price and availability of repair parts. If a control fails on your ductless mini split or rooftop unit, you have to go to the manufacturer to get the part. Most boiler parts can be sourced locally for much less money. The U.S. Department of Energy has a study called Field Performance of Inverter-Driven Heat Pumps in Cold Climates. It tested the heat output of air-to-air heat pumps. The study found the gas heat at 85% efficient would cost about 39% less to heat than the heat pump. What about steam systems? Are they efficient, I asked? No way, one yelled. Really? The Empire State Building in New York City, built over 90 years ago, is 102 stories high, 1,250 feet high, and heated with steam. It was awarded a LEED Gold Certificate for Efficiency, I said. How? Oh, one person asked. Steam zooms through a building that speeds up to 60 miles per hour without using a fan, compressor, or pump. It uses steam pressure drop to push the steam around the building. Commercial systems estimate about 2 ounces of steam pressure drop for each 100 feet of pipe. If the steam leaves a boiler at 2 psi, travels 200 feet, the steam pressure will be 1 pound 12 ounces, more than enough to heat a radiator. I'll close with a couple of statistics. A hydronic distribution system requires about 10% of the energy of an air distribution system. Water transfers heat 3,500 times better than air. A one-inch pipe can carry as many BTUs as a 20-inch round duct. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, duct systems typically lose 25 to 40 percent of their air through duct leaks. Still think boilers are old and inefficient? If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more expert advice and tips. I've written 12 boiler books and they're available on Amazon, and my technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.